What's up, guys? This is Isaiah from Yeah Games, and this is Dev Grind episode number eight, where I try to check in every day for about ten to fifteen minutes, just talk about what I've been doing. Uh, I didn't do one yesterday because I'm still trying to figure out if I actually want to do a Dev Grind episode on the days that I do a Gamoria Dev stream. Um, I could. It might be good because uh, then it's like at least there will be like a, con a continual day by day thing for the Dev Grind series. Uh, but I'm just trying to think of like what would be too redundant for people. Because they're two separate pra playlists. playlists. Um, so yeah. Uh, I may or may not do a dev grind on the same day that I do a Gamoria dev stream. Because on the day that I'm doing the dev stream, obviously people are going to see a lot of like the work I did. Um, so I think for now, I'm just going to do the dev grinds on days that I do not do a Gamoria dev stream. Just so that it um, doesn't feel like I'm um, filling everything up with too much of the same thing. So, if I were to do a dev grind uh, episode yesterday, I would have I would have talked about this, and this is what I worked on yesterday during the Gamoria dev stream. So yeah, it would have seemed redundant. Um, and so since I didn't cover it yesterday in a dev grind, that gives me the opportunity today to cover it in a dev grind. Uh, what we were doing yesterday in the Gamoria dev stream is when we had people wa watching and talking and hanging out is I continued this animation for Anaya running to the right. Uh, as I had said previously, I want to keep uh, the stuff that I do in the Gamoria dev streams uh, consistent from one to the next. So I didn't want to polish up this animation without streaming it, which is why I actually polished up this one. So this is what I did yesterday after the stream. I took this one to pretty much a full finished state. And you can see it's polished, it's got all her gradients, her shadows, and everything. And I'll show you guys that in game in a sec too. But this one, uh, last week Wednesday I had done the first rough sketch and then yesterday I spent another hour and a half doing cleaner lines on it. I'll just open up Unity and show you guys. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to keep doing the Gamoria dev stream. I'm gonna do it twice a week. So tomorrow I'm going to Actually, I'm going to just copy the line work I did here because doing all this clean line work takes a long time and then coloring it. And it's already been two episodes where I've been working on her right to run animation. I don't want to have it drag on too much. So I'm just going to copy the lines from here, move it up, flip it just as I did uh, for this one. And then tomorrow, for tomorrow's Gamoria dev stream, I'm actually going to do the coloring. So, because people already kind of got the whole point of. Uh, me doing all the animation stuff and the sketching and all that. So, um, so here's her idle, here's her down run, here's her right run. So this is what we've been working on on the stream, and then here's her finished left run. So this is what I want to eventually get to with this one with the stream. You can see there's a lot of like shape changes. Like here, she's kind of taller. Her head shape is a little bit more accurate. Here, her head kind of gets squished down. Um, and then the head bob is not as strong as this, like you can tell her body is kind of bouncing as she's running. Uh, so, um, tomorrow I'm just going to copy the line work I did for this animation, put it into this one, so then I could show people the coloring process of adding my black colors, shadows, gradients, etc. And you can see that there's a bit of an art shift from her idol to her run. And that's because I did her idle animation, like, several months ago, a couple months ago. But I was busy doing other things and hadn't gotten to her run animation, uh, mostly because I was busy doing uh, work for the patron page. Um, so her idle animation no longer matches her left run animation very well. 
You can see that there's a big pump in her eyes. Like right now, her eye is very circular, but here I made it a little more narrow, and that's because from the side view, her whole eye shouldn't be circular. So I consider the run animation to be more accurate. So her left run animation looks good to me. I need to fix her left idle animation. Uh, but I feel like the down idle to down run matches very nicely. You can see like her eye shape is correct, her mouth size is correct, her head shape, um, the clothes and everything. Like it all flows really well from, from here to here. Like there's the pop is super minor. But from here to here, like if I just go like this, you can see there's a lot of weird art things. So for her run animation, I'm going to have to like take her ponytail. It's kind of extending out too far. I'm going to have to pull that in a little bit. And then I'm going to have to... Um, There's a little bit of a change with how the shadowing works on her neck. So you can see when she's running, she's got this solid shadow on her neck, which I like. It follows how this looks, like her down anime. The uh, shadow goes all the way across her neck and her shoulders and stuff. And they do on the left run, but they do not on the left idle. So I need to fix the... hope the dogs don't start barking. Uh, I need to fix the left idle to match the left run. I also like how her face and everything, she just looks way better here. It's more recent, had more practice, you know, took the time to make it look good with this and copied it over, so um, I need to fix her idle animation. Looks good. This this will probably look fine too, because like her head's going to be covered by her hair. And it's natural for humans to identify the oddities by looking at their eyes and their face and all that. So I just gotta, I'm probably going to like copy the lines over her her face to start. Because if I can get her face to look the same, then the rest people might not even notice. So, hey, we got a host, which is actually pretty cool, because this is just a dev stream, and these dev streams usually only last for a little bit. So, thank you, Miss DJM, but this stream's only going to go on for about five more minutes. But thank you very much. Um, since you probably just tuned in, this is a dev grind thing that I do each day. It's, I just do it for 10-15 minutes to talk about like what I did yesterday and the what I'm doing today and what I want to do tomorrow. I was just recapping the animation stuff we went over in the dev stream yesterday. Um, so since I covered what I did yesterday and what I kind of want to do today, uh, tomorrow I am going to have another Gamoria dev stream. As I said, I wanted to be doing it twice a week, so I'm going to be having that consistent at 4 p.m. Hawaii, 7 p.m. Pacific, and 10 p.m. Eastern. So if people are watching this, or what have you, then you'll be able to check out our stream, which our Gamoria stream, which usually lasts for about an hour and a half. And I'm going to polish up this animation, as I previously said. Um, but then today, I'm just going to kind of, as I said, I'm going to fix this animation a little bit, and I also have a whole bunch of sketches that I wanted to start for the $50 patrons that I said I was going to do Monday, but I just didn't get to it because, you know, lo and behold, small business, you gotta deal with paperwork stuff, and uh, I talked about that last week, but it's kind of something you just gotta keep doing when you own a business. So, that was about eight minutes. Um, I don't feel like I need to really... I guess I could kind of talk about this for a little bit. And I'll end up talking about it in the Gamari dev stream tomorrow. But uh, the way I have my structure here is I have um, my lines broken up, my colors broken up, and then what I call final touches. So right now, this, you're just seeing the lines. And this is essentially like what you see with this too, where it's just a lot of work that goes into getting the motion and, you know, her stick for your arms and all the animation looking good. And then I do a really, like, slower, cleaner... Um, drawing over the top of it. And then after I get my lines done, I have this folder for all her colors. So I've got her hair, her ponytails, her color base for her clothing, the uh, extra colors, or what I call her undershirt, which is like this little collar, and then her f legs. Her 
We got two people watching. What's up, guys? So I'm happy you're both watching. Maybe I'll actually just have this stream last a little longer since I have some people watching. Um, so I'm totally down for that. I can just start working. If you guys want to watch me do a little bit of something, I could at least start doing some solid colors in this if you guys want. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so I have this uh, separated, as I said, into layers, and this is her skin, hair, blah, 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 pretty basic. Her eye whites, which is part of the things that I have to fix on her um, side idle animation. And then a little band for her ponytail. And uh, that doesn't take too long, but what takes a bit longer is getting all her shadow stuff correct. And this is kind of like what I would call my art direction folder, where I have this color balance layer that I have called art direction. I'll just hide everything so you guys can, I can break it apart. But I have a saturation thing because Gamari is pretty and saturated. I have a shadow folder, which I use to apply their shadows. I apply two masks. I have a mask on the folder and the mask on the actual paints. So if I disable this mask, you can see that they're in complete darkness. And then that's because I have a mask here which covers the entirety of her body for each of her frames. So when you work smart with Photoshop, you can use mask after mask. You can't apply a mask after a mask. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, enable. Like, you can select this and then say you want to add another mask, but it adds what's called a vector mask. And I don't really know what that is, but it's probably something to do with vectorization and uh, pathing and all that. So if you want to um, essentially create a mask for your mask, then we uh, have to group it and then apply a mask to the folder. So if I disable this mask, you can see this is like all my paintwork is kind of poopy all over the place. And that's okay. Because what I do is I select the... Um, you can see it all over. I select the transparency of um, all of her colors. I just go through like this. All the color layers that I did. I add the lines. And voila, then I apply a mask to that. I can actually... That's pretty much what this is here. And then so now I have a mask for how I paint the shadows, and then I have a mask so that the shadows do not extend beyond where these solid colors are for her color layers. It sounds kind of complex, but when you've worked with Photoshop for a while, you know to try and like not work destructively. So having these masks make it so that I can go back and change things and I'm never actually ruining any of the art. Um, and then I have another one that's pretty much exactly the same. It's just a bunch of gradients, top-down black to white gradients with the same mask. So you can see it's lighter at the top, darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, darker at the bottom. And that's just a uh, good practice for all kinds of art, especially characters. You always want like their heads and their faces to be well lit, and you want their colors down towards their feet to kind of go out a bit. That way you're focused on like, you know, their head and shoulders, not their knees and toes. Um, then I have this little thing I called art direction, which is basically just a color, selective color kind of thing, yeah. Uh, yeah, selective color. So what it does is I can go to my blacks, and you can see that I I get rid of my blacks and I push it, I push out the yellows, which means you can see it's very black right now, so by reducing the blacks and <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. Um, yeah, if you guys ever, like, shoot me an email or something, I'd love to explain this stuff. Like, that's part of the, the fun for me. So, I'm actually going to pull up my Twitch chat, because I'm actually watching the... I'm getting, like, a 30-second delay with what you guys say, so I can make this a little more engaging. I just need to silence my stream. Um, so I have... 
this art direction thing so that it's kind of like color grading for Photoshop. So by pulling out the blacks and pulling out yellows, all these dark black areas down by her feet are going to be more blue. And, you know, all this is going to look green too because I just got to hide this. And that's going to be hard to see regardless, but if you trust me, it's actually a little more blue. It's kind of um, cyan-y too. You can see I increased the cyans in the blacks. And I pulled out some magentas, so there's some green. So it's kind of like a blue-green cyan for all my blacks. And this is a file that I put into everything. There, now I can see your guys chat in real time. Um, I put this art direction folder into, or file into everything. And that's pretty much just how I get everything to look like it feels like it, they fit together. Because if I just have my stuff nice and simple with black line work, and then I follow a pretty similar color palette, with all my characters and creatures, like kind of a muted pastel. Oh, even tri man, this is like a hip hop and uh, dev grind. Not intended, but also totally okay. <laughs> I was supposed to be done with this by like five minutes ago, but I'm not gonna end it like right now if people are hanging out. Um. So what this does, it makes it really easy for me to work through lots and lots of files, you know, I've got insane amounts of uh, animation files. I'll just show you what I'm talking about, like if I go to more of my working assets, like some more of Anaya's animation. Uh, say I like her dance. I have the exact same art direction color thing. See, it's even the same folder, which I call Final Touches, same color and everything. It's because I just drag it from one file to the next. So I have this art direction file, exact same settings. And I just copy that from one thing to the next. And you can see again, like that pulls out the blacks, puts in a bit more of a cyan green blue. And it's the exact same thing I have here. So this is like the final product that you actually see in game when an eye is running around. So here the thing's already applied. If I don't apply it, I'll actually show you guys that. Uh, working assets. When I get rid of the, um... When I get rid of the, f what I call final touches, all the blacks turn black, which is nice for contrast, but I also like the blues and the blacks, which is kind of how life is when you have uh, the sun, or like the sky, as ambient. So that's kind of why I have my blacks as blues, because it kind of just reflects how the sky would hit the, the ground. So when you look at the underneath of a tree, it'll either be like a green, if it's reflecting a lot of green light from the grass, or it'll be blue, more of like a blue. Uh, so let's disable this final touches thing. You'll see there's a massive difference, not just, actually I'll keep the gradients. Keep the gradients and shadows, that way it's not like a huge pop. Alright, so now, it's very, very, very subtle, but her left idle animation right now has the art direction um, selective color on it. So the blacks down by her feet are a bit more of that greenish blue, but when she's running, you can see that there's a color change. See how she's like kind of more of a muted green right now, but now she's like a sharper black to blue with her clothes. Um, so it's really subtle, but it's just enough so that when she's inside of an environment, it feels like she fits in her environment a little bit better. Uh, I am the sole artist. I'm doing most of the code 
and design right now, but we do have a couple coders that um, are like helping in their time. And we've when we were at the Adobe Creative Jam last week, uh, I met a couple um, a couple of coders. Uh, this guy Ed White he introduced me to some coders that were in the area there uh, at the University of Hawaii doing computer science and so we're kind of like where we're good for needing help but for right now yeah I'm doing like most of this stuff uh, I'm gonna run Anaya way up here so this is her nasty ass sprint animation which has her 3d placeholder still so I don't even know if I'm close Oh yeah, I'm way out there. Gotta go this way. Um, yeah, I do most all the stuff right now. So the reason I'm running all the way up here is because I want to show you how she looks inside the environment with and without her art direction uh, little selective color tweak. Almost there. There we go. Alright, so, in her environment, you can... Okay, notice how huge of a difference this is. When she starts running, look how much the black changes on her belt. Like she, it's, uh, she sticks out way too much. Like right here, when she's standing with the idle animation, she meshes within the environment. Then when she starts running, she pops out a lot. Same with this here, she pops out kind of awkwardly. Um, I feel like that contrast is kind of nice, so I might find more of like a middle ground for the in-between of having no selective color and having some. But you can see here, she meshes into the background better than this. Like it's almost like she just pops out in an odd way. So that's why I have this selective color file. Long explanation for a very small tweak. There you go. Subtleties you pick up just from experience. So I'm going to resave this, that way I don't break it. Awesome thing about Unity, super plug and play. I don't even have st to stop playing the game and it just updates the file immediately. Like, see now she doesn't pop out when she's running. It's because uh, it already updated the file, which is awesome. I feel like my FPS just dropped for some very odd reason. By a little bit. I stopped playing. And my FPS dropped considerably, and I'm not quite sure why. Uh, anywho. Um, so this has been a very long dev grind. Uh, I don't... Since I wasn't really intending to do, like, a full stream right now. Um, I'm honestly not really prepared to do a full stream, but... I'm going to be streaming tomorrow, so you guys should come hang out tomorrow. And, uh, you know, if people keep showing up and stuff, then uh, I might do it more than twice a week, which would be good. I might start doing it three times a week, four times a week, whatever. So, you know, whatever you guys think. What do you guys want? I have more of an audience now on this dev grind than I've had for either of the two Pascal Moria dev streams, which is pretty cool. So, um, you should tell me what you think would be a good idea. Twice a week, three times a week, four, five...
Yeah, I'm usually going to try and shoot to have them be 4 p.m. Hawaii time. So I'm doing this a little bit later, like an hour, hour and a half later. Um, and I know that's a little early for Hawaii time because a lot of people don't get off work until like 5-ish if you have like a 9 to 5. But I'm trying to like take into consideration people on the west coast and east coast because um, 4 p.m. Hawaii is 7 p.m. the west coast and 10 p.m. east coast. So if I were to do it like an hour, two hours later, then that would be like midnight east coast and I don't know if I'd be getting any east coast viewers. Um, or maybe I would, I don't know. Maybe people watch Twitch when they're going to bed. I don't know. I don't even have my uh, Twitch alerts running right now, so I wasn't expecting any videos or er, vid people's. All right. Well. I'm gonna end this dev grind series because this has kind of become like a cool middle ground of dev grind meets Gamori dev stream. So, yeah, which I, I intended to just have this be 10 minutes, lasted longer because I had some cool people show up. So, thanks for coming and hanging out. But, yeah, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Hawaii, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll be putting more stuff up on social media as I have. Thank you very much, uh, Miss DJM, for hosting us today and maybe bringing in a couple people. And uh, thanks everyone for coming and saying hello. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so we're definitely going to be doing it twice a week. Um, as I said, 4 p.m. Hawaii, Tuesday, Thursday. And if it does well, then I'll do it three times a week. So I'm totally down to do it, like, frequently, because I enjoy that. So if we get enough people that are enjoying and watching the stream everything, then, you know, it might even get to the point where I'm doing it five days a week, which would be actually pretty cool. I wouldn't do it for really long. I wouldn't do it for, like, three, four hours. Um... Because when I stream, I spend a lot of time talking to people and explaining how I'm doing things and why I'm doing things. Um, which I like to do, but, you know, that just kind of slows down the work process a bit. So, uh, I, I would only probably do the stream for like an hour and a half as I have been. And then um, end the stream and just work the rest of the day as I normally would. But then I just start to stream up again the next day. Cool. Alright, well thank you for checking it out. I'm going to end the stream now. So, as I usually say, if people are interested, you can check out our Patreon page that has all the information on... Um, dot com. About the project, about who we are, about what we're doing. And uh, we already have a little base of patrons, which is awesome, and helping us pay our monthly bills. So, yeah. Alright, officially ending stream. Thanks for watching. Toodles.